Hey guys, it's Monday and that means one thing, it's all about mocha. Okay, so now we've got an important bit out of the way, let's get on with it. So today we're going to be looking at uh, mocha and we're going to be looking at screen replacement. This is the bread and buttering mocha and what most people know it for, but there is so much more to mocha as you will discover over the series. Today we're going to look at screen replacement. Uh, I have an iPad here which is very broken. It might not look like it to you, but as you see through the tutorial, it is very broken. I've dropped it one too many times, as have my little ones. Um, Screen replacement is really easy within Avid. You can do the corner pinning technique, which is really effective and really easy to do. Uh, really easy within Mocha as well. You haven't actually got to leave the timeline at all. It all happens within Avid if you have Mocha Pro. And then when you do things like this, it gets really easy to track it as well. You can move it about, do that. I can even push it closer to you and it all stays locked in. It's really easy to do. As you're gonna find out very shortly, and you will also find out just how broken my iPad is. Uh, let's get started, shall we? Here we are looking at my timeline. I'm just gonna quickly go into my editor workspace, effects editor workspace. And as you can see, I've already dropped Mocha onto my track. So we're gonna launch Mocha Pro until I'm fine with not running a full res. And I can see this is my track, but there's no actual track inserted at all. So we're gonna start from the beginning and we'll see how long it actually takes. Some of the stuff I'll speed up so you don't get too bored. Okay, so we're gonna start, we're gonna start with X-Blind. We're gonna start with X-Blind. We are gonna zoom in a tad, he says. Wrong button, helps you push the right button. And I'm gonna reposition that tablet so I can see it all properly. I'm gonna turn on the stabilize key, which keeps the thing I'm tracking in the center of my frame so I can see it all the time. And I'm gonna use X-Blind to start drawing around the tablet. Okay, let's run the tablet. No, it's not. Let's just add a node in there instead. Let's try again, rushing as usual. Okay, nothing too fancy, just literally get the information. The key thing with Mocha is giving it the right information. Next thing we'll do is add another, uh, another track, but to the same track data itself. So I'm gonna go on the inside of the tablet and just draw some data and I'm going to quickly tidy that up so it's nicely on the inside of a tablet. Okay, so basically what we're doing here, we're telling Mocha to look at the bezel of the track. If I click on the paint tool, that's what you guess. Literally what we're looking at. You can actually tidy up if you want, but I'm not gonna bother. That's fine, I'll just turn that paint tool off for a second. That one there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna track the inside of, we're actually gonna put markers on these two little homemade track marks that I made. So once again, just add more information to this track. I'm just gonna go around these. Okay, so that's the data we're gonna have. I have my screen tool, which we'll turn on in a bit, and I have my, well, but actually we'll just turn on the planar tool now, and we'll get it roughly, if I just hide, uh, what I wanna hide is I wanna hide that for a second so I can see my surface plane at all which would be really useful okay I'm gonna quickly put this roughly where it should be turn on this tool and I'm gonna to use this grid to help me line it up with the edge of the casing as you can see I can't actually see the screen in the iPad because it's very black so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna increase the light mouse is not working today, gotta to love the mouse. Okay, so as you can see, if I, when I adjust the screen, the actual grid moves. So what I can do is I can pull the screen plane at all down and I can line, up, line up the grid up with the casing and then push it back up so I know it's square. And we will carry on doing this now. So I'm gonna do that, push this corner out, pull this inner tad. Put that to roughly where I can see the line. Adjustments going on there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And the same with the side. Maybe cheat that in a little bit. So 
that's what we have. So what I'm going to do for a second, I'm just going to turn off the grid, turn off the surf planer tool, and we are going to do a track forward while looking at the actual track data. So we can do any manipulations and adjustments on the way. And then we shall see what we get. So starting my track where it is now, tracking forward. Actually, before I track, I'm going to turn on perspective because we need the perspective as I bring the uh, tablet close to the camera. So let's track forward. Okay, so not bad. There wasn't uh, too much drift, but there was a little bit and we need to get that sorted out. So I'm just going to create the end of my track point there. So that's my, so the base of the purple area is my full track. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go back to the first keyframe, turn on my surface tool, turn on my grid. And now as you scroll, you can actually see what's happening with your surface. The grid is basically telling you what's happening with your surface tool. There's a few little things to be sort out. So the next thing to do is to go into your track adjust tab. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, I'm now in my adjust my adjust track tab. Try to say that quickly. And as you can see, I have four little uh, four little squares. Forgot what they were there with the red crosses in, and they are set above my surface insert uh, tool base where the, where the new insert is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset these tracks to be on these white kind of homemade crosses that I put on there with PVC tape. So the first thing I do, I'm just going to grab the first one and as you can see the blue box stays where it should be and I have the green box and the yellow kind of tile onto it. So I'm going to set that onto the a good clean section of the white tape and I'm going to go around and do that to all of them quickly. Okay, so that's what we have. We have them all set to where they should be. And on this little box down the bottom, you can see each corner as it is. I'm just going to give that a little nudge. Maybe give that a little nudge to the right. The left a little tad. Okay, and then I'm going to set these all to master. So all of these are now set to be my new master reference points. So what I'll do now as I scroll through, because I think we already have the track data in on the first track, we are going to um, just scroll through and see how these drift over time. Okay, so at that point you can see I've drifted on the first one, so I'm just going to hit auto, see how that lines are back up, choose my next point, click auto, that's going to go left a little tad, my next, my next corner. Hit auto, that's not bad, just bring it right a bit and maybe up a little bit. And the top corner, the auto on that. That looks pretty good. And we'll keep scrolling forward. As you see, every single time I do that, it inserts a keyframe. The key is here to get it to where it's out the most and then bring it back in. So let's have a look at that there. Obviously, I'm moving it around a lot. So the only, the only uh, question would be is whether we lose a lot of track when we hit the reflection, which is there, but it does seem pretty stable. So what we'll do now is we'll go back into my track mode and we're gonna, we could insert a logo or we could just go literally and insert the layer below. And there I am, funnily enough. And then we can just scroll that backwards and forwards. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of the white tape sticking out every now and again as it shifts about a bit. So a little bit of tidying up needed to be done. But all in all, that is not a bad track at all. So if we just quickly have a quick little tidy up. I feel of the track. And because the actual, that looks pretty good to me. There was a little bit of white tape that stuck out at some point. Where was that? 
Oh, there it is. There is quite a lot of movement. I'm actually testing it pretty well, in all fairness. I'm just going to drag you down a little bit. Just to get past that type. Yeah, that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of tape there on the corner. Or oh, is that a reflection? But just out of, to do it properly, we'll just slide that across a tad. Okay, so what we'll do now is we will just close this down. That will literally go straight into Avid. Come to Avid, hit on render. There I am. So once I render that out, uh, you will get the result of what you saw in the opening. And that's it, simple as that. Don't forget to pop across the AV3 website. Hope you're enjoying our little Mocha Mondays. Um, hope they find them useful and hopefully a little bit enjoyable. Um, if you get sick, pop across my YouTube channel. If you want to hook up with me, have a conversation, message me on my YouTube channel, which is The Creative Collective, funnily enough. Who would have thought? Uh, take care, I'll see you next week.